you see. When we talk about reality, it is simply... Now open your eyes. All right, guys, Luma Labs just dropped their newest and most advanced model. In today's video, we're going to dive right in. I'll show you what Ray 3 can do, walk you through the new features, and we'll explore it all together. And here is the best part. We're not just talking about it, we're actually going to test it out. I'll break down what it is, how it works, and share my honest experience. So let's check out Ray 3 and see what this new model is really all about. Ray 3 is their most powerful video model yet. They claim it delivers state-of-the-art realism with sharper detail and more natural motion. One of the big highlights is HDR. They say it can generate native 16-bit high dynamic range video, which means richer colors, deeper shadows, and professional grade editing flexibility. Ray 3 also introduces reasoning. Luma claims the model can understand intent, plan complex motion, and even improve its own results. They've also added annotation, where you can draw on frames to guide layout, motion, and interaction. Let's check out some text-to-video examples to see what Ray 3 can do with just prompts. A woman rides a bear running rapidly through a forest in a mountainous area, wide shot, motion blur. And here's another example. Golden Hour illuminates a small bird perched on a resting rhino's horn in a hyper-realistic, cinematic close-up. The camera intimately captures the rhino's weathered skin and the bird's delicate movements in a symbiotic act. A blurred savanna and soft breeze complete the scene. Now let's look at image to video. Here's the prompt. A hyper-realistic, slow-motion close-up features a pink axolotl gently swimming through crystal-clear freshwater. Its translucent skin glows with iridescent shimmer and feathery gills pulse with vibrant shades. Here's a comparison video made by Heather Cooper on Twitter, showing how the same prompt looks across different AI video generators, including Ray 3. All right, now it is our turn to try. First, let's try out Luma's image creation feature. I'll type in the man is walking in the Amazon forest and a bear is stalking him from behind. Let's see what we get. Okay, so it gave us four images, but honestly, they're not great. The AI didn't really understand what we wanted. So lesson learned, Luma Labs isn't the best choice for creating images. Good thing I came prepared. I've already got the perfect image of a man walking through the Amazon with a bear stalking him. If you watched my previous video, you know we created this using Nano Banana and tested it in Sea Dream 4. Anyway, let's get back on track. I'm uploading that image now, and here's my prompt. The man is walking in the Amazon forest, and a bear is stalking him from behind, moving carefully to remain unnoticed. Now I'm going to select 1080p for the resolution. Quick heads up, when you choose 1080p, you'll notice that in the dynamic range options, you can only pick SDR. The HDR and HDR EXR options get locked out. But that's fine, I'm sticking with 1080p. Just so you know, if you drop down to 720p, you'll actually get more dynamic range options to play with. But for this demo, let's keep it at 1080p. Don't forget this important step, you need to choose your model. I'm gonna start with Ray 3, and then we'll try Ray 3 reasoning later to see what the difference is. That'll be interesting to explore. All right, let's enter our prompt. The man is walking in the Amazon forest, and a bear is stalking him from behind, moving carefully to remain unnoticed. I'm going to turn off the draft mode here, just so you know, when draft is on, it says the video generates much faster, up to 20 times faster than a full render, but it can affect the quality. So let's turn that off for the best results. All right, it's generating now. Okay, let's check out what we got. The movement actually looks pretty good. It's realistic, and the camera movement is great. But here's the issue. Why is the face so unclear? There's some distortion happening and you can see morphing, which isn't what we want. Also, notice how the leaves and the surrounding environment look way too sharpened. It's got this over-processed look. 
that doesn't feel natural? Definitely not what I was expecting. But hey, that was just our first try. Let's see what happens with Ray 3 reasoning. I'm going to use the exact same image and the same prompt. The only thing I'm changing is the model. Let's see if that makes a difference. I don't see any improvement. I don't know why it is giving me multiple outputs. So did I change the variations unintentionally? Oh, the first one is in 1080p, and the rest are drafts. I want to see just the image to video result without a prompt. There's actually a lot of movement happening in this scene. The background, the surroundings, rain effects, plus the barren man moving. But the video quality isn't very clear. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the image I'm using isn't high resolution. I created it with Nano Banana and edited it multiple times. So the faces and details weren't super clear to begin with. I didn't upscale it or anything. But remember, this is just to test and show you what Ray 3 can do. Let's try something different. We'll use the start frame and end frame feature. I've got these two images ready, the front view of the man and bear that we used earlier as our start frame and the rear view as our end frame. Here's my prompt. The man is walking in the forest and behind him a bear is stalking. The camera is orbiting around them from front to back. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, this is actually pretty funny. The camera isn't rotating around them at all like I asked. Instead, they're just walking toward the camera, then turning around and walking back. Okay, this is funny, but here's something interesting. Notice how the bear is actually chasing to reach its end frame position as fast as it can. It successfully made it to where it's supposed to be in the end frame. So here's what I'm learning. When the model can't quite pull off the specific camera view we're asking for, it'll basically just transition from the first frame to the last frame. But what's cool is this model has a real strength here. It's really good at making sure the subjects end up in their correct positions, even if the camera movement isn't what we wanted. Now let's try something else, no prompt at all, just the start and end frames. So what happens here is that it simply transitions the scene from the front view to the rear view. When AI struggles with this front to rear transition, you'll usually get one of two things, either some weird distorted views or just a basic transition between the frames. In this case, I wouldn't say Ray 3 is perfect, but where most AI totally struggles, it still manages to pull through. Now, when it comes to start frame to end frame, Kling is actually really good at this. So let's do a comparison. I'm gonna use the exact same images we just tested in Ray 3 and see how Kling handles them. I'll upload the start frame and end frame, and I'm using Kling 2.1 in professional mode, set to five seconds. Let's see the difference. Let me also test out the annotate feature. I'm gonna draw the path for the bear to follow the man and then have them walk to the right side into the forest. So it's not actually following the path I drew. Looks like I didn't do something right here. Let me check what Ray 3 actually interpreted from my annotation. It says, I focused on animating the small bear cub moving through the dense jungle alongside the man in tactical gear using your start frame to bring dynamic interaction into this tense forest scene. Okay, so that tells me I definitely didn't use the annotate feature correctly. So that's gonna wrap it up for today. Here are my final thoughts on Ray 3. Ray 3 is good, it does a good job at keeping characters consistent, and there's lots of motion happening in the background. The whole scene feels active, like everything's moving, but it's not the best for everything. For some projects, it might work great. For others, not so much. It really depends on your specific needs and what you're trying to create. And here's another downside, credits. You're gonna need to buy a lot of credits to really use this. With the $10 plan, I was only able to create a few clips before it dried up really fast. So definitely keep that in mind. That's pretty much it for this update. Please subscribe for more updates, drop a like, and share your opinions in the comments. Thanks for watching.